This is one of my many, many projects. This is a 57 TR3, and on this car, it's only got one brake light. If that light goes out, people run into you. I'm going to use my 3D printer to make some parts so I can add lighting inside these housings. This is what the tail light looks like and the inside, and you can see that there's uh, one of these dual element uh, regular incandescent bulbs here. There's not a lot of room. There is some right in here. Now what I decided to do was mount one of these LED panels and it needs to be in about this location to beam straight back so that it can hit in this area of the uh, lens. Um, so to do that I designed up a part in Google SketchUp and printed this with my 3D printer. It's got sort of a weird shape here because it allows a screw to be inserted here and a screwdriver to mount this right where the normal screw is for the taillight housing. And then it allows this panel to get hot glued into position. Now the other thing about this panel is it's got one part that sticks out on the back. That's a bridge rectifier so it just happens to line up with this access hole and uh, it'll glue in there beautifully so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and it's a pretty cold day today so I'm gonna need to work a little faster than usual here's the final assembly and uh, the wires have already been routed so the ground wire is just connecting right here and then the uh, hot lead is routing into the trunk and the nice thing is it actually lines up correctly isn't that beautiful? All right, now let's see what it looks like. Some of the channel subscribers are going to be interested in how the part is made. So you start by drawing the part in SketchUp, and you can see this part is designed so that you can put that screw and the screwdriver right in here. Now, once you've got the part designed, then if you have the plugin installed, to be able to export in STL, you select that option. Unit format your printer is set up for. Mine is set in millimeters, so you say OK, and then you select STL. When you do this, it's going to ask you where to store it. You go ahead and do that. Now, in the Repeter Host program, which is the one that runs the uh, 3D printer, go ahead and you add the part, select that drop it into position. Now you can see this part has an open area here and you can't just print this layer of plastic out there in open space. You need some kind of uh, support structure. So that gets added automatically when you actually slice up this 3D model into individual layers. So you do that from up here under slicer configuration okay and under support material this is where you go ahead and select to generate that automatically you select that and then you go ahead and hit the slice button and then what ends up happening is it's going to pop over into the G code editor over here and this is the actual language that is going to be outputted to the printer and this shows what the output is going to look like. We're going to take a quick look at this here. So the first layer that's going to get printed looks like this. Now each one of these lines is actually the plastic that's being deposited on the print bed. And all of this code over here is, is actually what is used to output uh, all of those little segments of plastic. So you see as I scroll down, it's actually uh, showing you what it's doing, what the machine is doing, okay? And we could take a look at one of those lines as an example. That's a line of plastic that's being developed as a result of this G1 command that says to go to a specific X location and a specific Y location and start extruding um, a certain amount of plastic. As the program continues, you see each little segment of plastic being deposited. Now you start to see a strange structure 
right in here. This is the support material, so the next layer can print on top of it, and then you'll see the rest of the part begin to develop on top of that, all the way up to the last layer. And that's what it looks like here with the support material uh, in this region that's going to be removed. This is what the part looks like when it comes off of the printer. And because it's got an overhang here that you can't just print in space, uh, there's a support structure right in here. And uh, this just comes off with your finger. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this out. And uh, you just squish it here and then grab a hold of it. Oops, almost broke my fingernail there. There we go. And once you get on that, it actually comes out really easily and it exposes the open area on the part. Well, that's one of my many weekend projects. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching that. And for the Epicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.